Hey, John Dillon here with a exciting tutorial from visualbroccoli.com. What makes this tutorial kind of exciting, it really does lay the foundation for many tutorials to come and how you can learn to prepare your files from Photoshop or Photoshop elements to be used in other types of presentation mediums like PowerPoint, Keynote, but also used in Word and Publisher or just about any type of program. So without further ado, let's get started. So here is an example of what we're going to do in this lesson. Uh, my topic here, let's say hypothetically, and of course it could be anything, but this is, let's say I'm going to do a talk on biohazards in the workplace. And this is pretty typical where people have a slide with some text and a bullet point and they have an image. Now, this doesn't look too bad. In fact, this is fairly clean, cleaner than most presentations. And as you're going to find in my tutorials, I have a tendency to keep slides very simple and very clean. And we'll talk more about that later on. But what we want to do here is uh, we're going to really kind of have this biohazard image jump out. And what we're going to do is remove the white. We're going to make it transparent. We're going to add a drop shadow to kind of give our image a little bit of pop, if you will, or kind of a three dimension look. And then we're going to change it from black to red. And of course, I could change it to white or other colors. But for this tutorial, we're going to change it to red. In the end result, we're going to have something like this. Let's jump into Photoshop and get started. All right, I'm here in Photoshop. I happen to be using Photoshop CS3. Uh, but any version of Photoshop should do the trick. What we're going to do here is here's our image, the biohazard symbol, which of course you can download right from our website so you can follow along. And the first order of business is to unlock this background layer. And in our layers palette, which is over to the right here, and if your layers palette is not visible, it could be hidden. So click on a few boxes here or go to window and make sure you have a check mark in front of it. The first thing I need to do is I need to unlock this background layer. And we're going to do that simply by double clicking on it. By double clicking on this and saying OK, we're going to turn this from a background to a layer. The difference is when I go to a layer, I can actually get rid of this white background and make it transparent. So let's go ahead and double click on it. And I'm just going to say OK. And you notice it's going to change the name from background to layer zero. I can also rename this to image or whatever I want, but I'm going to stick with the default. And you notice now it is called layer zero. The lock icon is gone. In fact, I can even fool around with the opacity. And the opacity, very simply put, is the transparency. 100% means it is 100% visible. As I scroll down, it becomes more and more transparent. So zero would mean nothing is visible. What we want is the checkered box. This represents transparency. So that's what we want to see when we get rid of a background. So we're set to go here. Now, to get rid of this white background, there's many different ways to do it, but we're going to go with the simplest way to do it. What we're going to do is go over to our toolbar. And again, if your toolbar is not visible, go up to Window and click Next to Tools. And we're going to click on a tool called the Magic Wand. And you'll see it right here. It looks like a magic wand. And I'm going to go ahead and click over my image. And you'll notice when I click over my image that my cursor turns into a magic wand. And I'm going to go ahead, for example, and just click on the black. And you notice that it selected all the black since it's contiguous. If I click here in this little circle, it will only grab this circle, which is represented by these marching ants. Because these other white areas are really kind of separate, separated from each other, it only selects one at a time. Now, of course, I can just hit the delete key and that'll go away and then select this, hit the delete key and so on. Or I can just hit the shift key and you'll see a plus icon come next to my magic wand cursor and I can select multiple areas and hit the delete key. Pretty slick, pretty easy to do. I'm going to get rid of the marching ants by going up to select and deselect. And the marching ants are now gone. 
Now our next step is to turn this red. In Photoshop, there's many ways to do this, but by far, one of the advantages of Photoshop over Photoshop Elements is, is in Photoshop Elements, I physically have to change this color to red. What I'm gonna do is use a layer style, much like we're gonna add a drop shadow. So with the layer selected, I'm gonna come down to this little FX at the bottom of the layer style, and I'm gonna add a layer style, and I'm gonna choose Color Overlay. And by default, it happens to choose red. I didn't select this ahead of time. Red just happens to be the default. If you wanna change the color, Click on the swatch box here and you get a color picker and you can select a variety of colors right here. What's nice about this is I can do OK, do OK, you know what, I want this to be yellow instead. I double click here now, you see the effect is on, and by the way to turn off the effect I can poke out the eyeball, click on it and say you know what, I want this to be blue. I don't want the effects, turn them off. Double click on it again, let's go back to red. Perfect. Now we need to add a drop shadow. Hit the FX again. In fact, all I had to do is when I had cover, color overlay selected, come up here, choose drop shadow, and I get in the same, same time. So now if I move this, you can see I got a drop shadow underneath it. Now I have a lot of manual adjustments. I can change the, the distance, the spread, or the size. But I find for the most part, the default really works well. And if I want to, let's just make it a little harder shadow. That looks good. We're almost done. I do want to show one more thing here is I have plenty of space around my image, but if you don't, be very, very careful when you're adding drop shadows. Let me just show you here by increasing the distance, and this is really extreme. You notice down here that my shadow is being cut off. If I were to save this, my shadow would have a harsh cut, which would really not look real natural. Let's go back here. And I'm going to change the distance back to something really subtle, more to the default. Let's go with three or four pixels. Actually, it's eight selected there. That works. And I'm happy with that. Now, all I have to do is save the file. Go File, Save As. And the default is going to be a PSD file, we want to go ahead and scroll down and look for a PNG file. The PNG file is what helps us preserve the transparencies. And I'm going to choose Biohazard 2, save it. I'm going to overwrite my file, I have many copies of it, and I'm just going to go with the PNG options and just say OK. And we're done. Let's go into PowerPoint and see what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and insert our image, and there it is, and it's a little larger than I need it, which is okay, and I'm going to bring that right here, and we're looking pretty good. Now there are things we can do with this image which we'll cover in other tutorials, lots of different options. As I said, this is just a basic foundation for things to come. The one thing with this is, I'm pretty happy with this slide. It's looking pretty clean. I don't have a lot of text or bullet points on it. But what I might want to do is, is even go a step further. Let's go to full presentation mode here. And instead of having the bullet point, maybe I'll do something like this. Simply get rid of the bullet point and keep the text even cleaner. And again, I have a visual cue with the text for me as the presenter. And I have some eye candy for my audience. This is just one example of how we can make our presentations a little more editable for our classroom. Well, that's all the time we have today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let us know. Until then, take care. <music>